low or high reps? Which is optimal for building muscle according to the science? Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching, local tight long sleeve t-shirt enjoyer. Lifters have gotten jacked using high reps or low reps for a long time. If we're talking about high reps, look at Tom Platts. He often performed very high rep sets on the squat and he had some of the biggest squats around. But if we're talking about big legs, we can also talk about Ronnie Coleman, who often squatted with repetition ranges as low as three to five reps per set. So if successful bodybuilders have gotten jacked using both higher rep sets and lower rep sets, does that mean rep range doesn't matter for hypertrophy? Well, not so fast. Elite lifters can't really tell us much about which rep range is more effective when there are things like genetics and PED usage or steroid usage that play much larger roles that could be overshadowing any potential smaller differences from different rep ranges. So instead, let's look at the science that is able to detect these smaller differences. First, why would repetition range actually impact hypertrophy? Well, for one, the volume load you accumulate during a given set very much depends on the rep range you're training in. If you're doing a set of five, your volume load will typically be much lower than if you did the same exercise for a set of 20. Importantly, since in some ways, volume load is a proxy for how much tension you applied to the muscle, and tension is the main driver of muscle growth, that does potentially mean something for hypertrophy. Importantly, higher rep ranges might also increase the amount of metabolites being accumulated. For example, we have several studies showing that higher rep ranges lead to greater accumulation of lactate in your blood, and to greater reductions in blood pH. And while the role of metabolites in stimulating muscle growth has been contentious for a long time, and the evidence at this point still really isn't clear, there may or may not be an effect there, or at least the potential for rep ranges to impact hypertrophy in different ways via tension and via metabolites. So if metabolites aren't playing too much of a role, maybe it just comes down to sort of area under the curve of tension, or maybe just how many effective reps you got in. Or does it? Is that really all there is? Well, fortunately, we do actually have studies measuring muscle growth directly when it comes to using different rep ranges, so we can determine what rep range is best for muscle building. The most recent comprehensive look at the data on repetition ranges for muscle building comes from Schoenfeld and colleagues in 2021. They essentially looked at the vast majority of the studies on the topic to derive what is the best repetition range to work in for muscle building. And in short, here's what they found. They found that going too light, much below 30% of your one rep max, or going too heavy, much above 85% of your one rep max, both actually impede muscle growth. Let me break down the individual studies that actually led to this recommendation of this range from 30% of your max to 85% of your max. The bottom end of this recommendation, that is to say going no lower than 30% of your max, is based on three studies by Buckner and colleagues, by Lasevichius and colleagues, and by Mitchell and colleagues. The first study by Buckner and colleagues compared using 70% of your max to using 15% of your max in a within participant design, training your elbow flexors with one arm using 15% of your max and the other arm using the aforementioned 70% of your max. Some of the conditions also included the use of occlusion training, where you're essentially occluding blood flow away from that muscle group. To make a long story short, whether participants were using occlusion or not, 70% of your max did consistently lead to more muscle growth compared to 15% of your max. So based on this study, using only 15% of your max isn't enough to maximize muscle building. Next up, we have the study by Lasevichius and colleagues, where they compared using 20% of your max to 40% of your max to 60% of your max to 80% of your max on the bicep curl and on the unilateral leg press. All participants had one limb assigned to the 20% of their max condition. They started training with this condition, performing three sets to failure. Then with the other arm or leg, whether they were in the 40%, 60%, or 80% condition, they would aim to match the volume load achieved with the first limb. So for example, they would do more sets in order to get to the same total volume load as they achieved, with their 20% limb. Broadly speaking, hypertrophy was somewhat similar between 20%, 40%, 60%, and 80%. However, when they directly compared the 80% limb to the 20% limb, they did potentially find more growth with 80% versus 20%. And so potentially using 20% of your one rep max also isn't quite enough 
to get the maximum muscle building effect from a given set. And the final study by Mitchell and colleagues compared doing unilateral leg extensions with 30% of your max to doing them with 80% of your max. And when performing three sets on each condition, they actually saw similar quadricep growth. And so when you take all three of these studies together that compare different intensities on the lower end, between 15%, 20%, and 30%, Around 30% seems to be when you potentially start to see the maximum muscle building effect from a given set. Importantly, this recommendation isn't based on a ton of studies, but I think it is a decent ballpark to start with. Now, what about going too heavy? I mentioned earlier going above 85% of your max might not be ideal for muscle building. Well, once again, this recommendation is largely predicated on three studies. Two studies by Brad Schoenfeld and colleagues, and one study by Manjin and colleagues. The first study by Schoenfeld and colleagues found similar growth when doing three sets of 10 with one and a half minutes of rest between sets to doing seven sets of three with three minutes of rest between sets. And the second study by Schoen and colleagues found similar hypertrophy when doing three sets of eight to 12 reps versus three sets of two to four reps with two minutes of rest in both groups. Likewise, the third study by Manjin and colleagues found similar hypertrophy whether doing three sets of eight to 12 reps or three sets of two to four reps. So does that mean we grow similarly from doing sets of two to four versus sets of eight to 12? Well, if you paid attention, you'll notice that some of these studies had diverging results. Essentially, there was a conflict in what they found. Can we try and explain why this conflict exists? Well, first, let's go back to the study that compared three sets of 10 to seven sets of three. In this case, they had participants in the seven sets of three group do around two and a half as many sets as any other group. And additionally, on top of that, they also took twice as much rest between sets to, in the end, just get the same muscle growth. And in fact, in the heavier group, they often took at least three times as long to finish the session compared to the group doing three sets of 10. And so even though they found similar muscle growth in the real world, you could have just spent more time in the gym, maybe done a fourth or a fifth set of 10 and seen more muscle growth. So not only did this study not equate for number of hard sets, which we know volume is consistently predictive of muscle growth, the more volume you do to a certain point, the more muscle growth you see, but they also didn't equate for rest times between sets, which generally also makes each individual set more effective the longer you rest. Next, the second study by Schoen following colleagues did generally find similar or greater growth when using that higher rep range. So it wouldn't be fair to just classify this as the same muscle growth regardless of rep range. And finally, the study by Manjin and colleagues also had participants rest for three times as long between sets in the heavier group compared to the lighter group. And as as we know, the more you rest between sets to a certain point, the more effective each set becomes. So they weren't just comparing rep ranges, they were also comparing how long they rested for between sets, creating a confounding effect. So until further research, this rep range of two to four reps likely isn't ideal for muscle growth. Instead, we might want to use five reps as a minimum number of reps to reach on each set to maximize your muscle building. So to maximize your muscle building, a minimum of around 30% of your max might be necessary. And at the top end, at least five reps per set are necessary to maximize muscle growth on a set per set basis. But hold up, what does 30% of your max even mean? What does that actually mean in terms of repetitions per set? Well, fortunately for us, a meta regression by Nuzo and colleagues from just last year actually looked at exactly this. How many reps can people do at different percentages of their max? They looked at a ton of studies and here's what they found. With 30% of your max, you can typically do around 50 reps, five zero. There is going to be some variance around this. You might be able to do 40 reps or you might be able to do 60 reps, but generally around 50 reps is possible with 30% of your max. So from all of this evidence, we can derive the recommendation that between five reps and 50 reps per set is optimal for muscle building. Now, because you have such a wide variety of effective rep ranges, you might ask, Ask, should I be training faster twitch muscle groups with lower reps and slower twitch muscle groups with higher reps? The truth there is probably not. There is some evidence of slower twitch muscle fibers responding more favorably to higher rep work, both in potentially occlusion scenarios, as I mentioned earlier, where you're restricting the blood flow away from that muscle and in non-occlusion scenarios, or essentially just regular training. With that occlusion, a review paper found relatively inconsistent and weak evidence in favor of this idea. However, with occlusion, another review paper found more consistent and potentially convincing evidence of using higher reps, again, with occlusion, 
to potentially elicit specifically slower twitch fiber hypertrophy. Importantly, in this review paper, they noted that they didn't really have many studies comparing low load or high rep occluded training to traditional low load training or traditional higher load slash lower rep training. And so while they found that occluded higher rep training led to more slow twitch hypertrophy than occluded high load training, it's unclear whether or not this also generalizes to the comparison of high rep occluded training and regular training. With that being said, in this review paper, they did note that when participants performed occluded training with high reps, they typically saw a greater proportion of hypertrophy coming from slower twitch fibers compared to faster twitch fibers. This is interesting because in higher load occluded training, say heavier whack, generally they note that more of the hypertrophy comes from faster twitch fibers proportionately and less of it from slower twitch fibers. So there is some evidence, at least in occluded scenarios, that there is some fiber type specific hypertrophy. But the general applicability of these findings remains questionable because we don't have many comparisons with unoccluded training. Here are my takeaways from this research. One, it probably isn't worth trying to match the repetition ranges you use to the muscle fiber type of a muscle or to your composition as an individual, as some people have more faster twitch fibers and some people have more slow twitch fibers. And importantly, if you're using a variety of rep ranges for most muscle groups in your program, I think you might be getting the benefit already as far as matching repetition range to the fiber type of a muscle or an individual. And in fact, here's why you probably should be using a variety of rep ranges in your program as opposed to just going heavy, say doing sets of five, or just going light, say doing sets of 30 to 50 reps. And that's because there is some preliminary evidence suggesting that combining a variety of rep ranges in your program does lead to a little bit more muscle growth potentially than just using one. And to an extent, this makes sense. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the rep range you use can have effects on how much tension you expose a muscle to, the accumulation of metabolites, and potentially other factors. And in fact, if nothing else, even if you don't get more muscle growth, most people enjoy some variation across their training week in terms of what they're doing. Going heavier on Monday, going a little bit lighter on Wednesday, and going light on Friday might be more enjoyable than always going heavy or always going moderate or always going light. Additionally, if nothing else, some exercises do tend to work better in my experience in certain rep ranges. So let's say you were committed to only using high rep ranges. In my view, high rep ranges on squats, for example, probably aren't ideal. You're more likely to end the set because you're so gassed overall versus your quads, glutes, or adductors actually being that close to failure. And that brings me to a few caveats of very high rep training. First, as I just mentioned, when you go much past 12 or maybe 15 reps, most people's ability to gauge how close to failure they really are actually breaks down quite a bit. While people are generally pretty accurate at estimating how close to failure they are, they're usually off by less than one rep on average. When you go above 12 reps, they become increasingly less accurate. And by the time you get to 20 or 30 reps, you may be underestimating how many more reps you could have done by say five reps or more. And because we know that taking a set sufficiently close to failure is important for muscle growth and might be especially important for higher rep training, if you're unable to really push yourself that hard because you can't really tell anymore because everything is burning and you're out of breath, that might not be ideal. And that's why I think most of your training should probably take place between five and 15 reps for muscle growth, but having some variety in there, even some sets with say 15 to 20 or 20 to 30 reps, or even potentially between 30 and 50 reps might be beneficial for muscle growth. Now that I've given you some caveats on when and why high rep training might not be ideal for muscle growth, let me give you a few use cases where I think it's actually quite useful. First, as I mentioned, I think some of your training should take place in those higher rep ranges if you're trying to maximize muscle growth. Most of your training should be in that five to 15 rep range, but some of your training should be in say the 15 to 50 reps rep range. The second case where I see high rep training being quite beneficial is if you're dealing with some pain. For a lot of people, if they're having some pain while training and they just increase their rep range, in my experience, that can help with how much pain they're experiencing. Not injury advice, not a physical therapist, but in my experience as a coach, it can help. The next big use case is when you have limited load available. Let's say you're traveling and all you have is a hotel gym with those 25 pound dumbbells. It turns out if you wanna make the most of those, you're not really gonna have much of a choice but to go for super high reps. And the good news is, as long as your rep range is somewhere around 50 or lower, you may still actually see the same muscle growth if you're pushing yourself sufficiently hard. Likewise, if you're traveling and don't have any equipment, even bodyweight training, even if you're doing up to 50 push-ups, 
can still be a decent option for muscle growth. And finally, preference. Some people simply prefer heavier weights and going a little bit heavier, but likewise, some people prefer going a little bit lighter because they get more of a burn or what have you. They just enjoy it more and that's totally fine. Now that I've broken down all the science on rep ranges, let me give you a few takeaways. Repetition range is kind of like tempo. There is a wide range of what is likely to be very or maximally effective. And in this case, that is between five reps per set and 50 reps per set. The exact number of reps within this range that you do probably doesn't matter much provided you actually go to failure or equally close to failure. Matching your rep ranges to the fiber type of your muscles or yourself as an individual probably isn't anything to worry about provided you're getting in a variety of rep ranges in your training which is probably a good thing for overall hypertrophy and also for enjoyment and to cover you for any potential fiber type specific hypertrophy. With that being said, most of your training should take place in the 5 to 15 rep range for practicality reasons. It's quite difficult to push yourself close to or to failure when you go much above 30 or 40 reps per set. But you should still include some higher rep training to get a variety of rep ranges in when you're potentially dealing with some pain, when you have a limited load available, or if you simply enjoy it. And that is the video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what else you want to see from this channel. If you're interested in coaching, check out the link above and I could take care of your training and nutrition. And with that being said, have a great day and I will see you in that next one. Peace. All right, autofocus, please do your thing. I'm looking you in the eyes, Lens. Oh, there we go.